I'm Nikki, I'm going to be taking today's live recipe. Um, I, so if you haven't joined us before, these live recipes are an opportunity for you to ask questions, um, ask us for substitutions, ask us for tips. Um, so please, you know, fire away with your comments and questions. Um, I'm just going to, I've got my laptop here so I can see all of your questions. I'm just going to refresh this so that I can see who's joining. Um, I hope you're all well. Hi Jenny. Morning Hope. Okay, so today we're, uh, today we're going to talk about granola. Um, and this week we have been focusing on food waste. So I thought I'd show you how to make two different granola recipes. One is going to be sweet and one is going to be savoury. Um, so they'll be used for different things and I'll talk about that and how, how we can use them both. Um, but granola is a really nice way to use up the ends of your kind of bag of oats, your bag of nuts, seeds, um, dried fruits. And you can really kind of customise it to whatever flavours you like. You can throw spices in. Um, obviously there's some spices that will work better with the sweet one, like your cinnamon, your vanilla, maybe nutmeg, even cardamom. Um, and then the savoury one, you can go a bit more adventurous with your spices if you want to, or you can keep it quite simple and just have it as more of a kind of savoury snack. Um, so, hello, we've got a few more people joined. Hi, Colleen, nice to see you again. Robbie, hello, Penelope, Elkie, Karen, and Day, hello. Um, okay, so um, I'm also going to throw you in a little bonus food waste trick, um, which you can use with any of your citrus fruits. Um, so I'll come on to that when we get into the sweet granola. Um, yeah, so that's it today. We're going to talk about granola. Um, and let's get on with it, shall we? So I've got the two recipes up here. Um, they are slightly different quantities in terms of your, your base mixture for the sweet one versus the savoury one. Um, and the reason I've done that is because with the savoury one, I like to use it to kind of sprinkle on soups or salads um, or stews or just have it as kind of like a trail mix to snack on. So with that one, I prefer to have kind of less oats and more of the good stuff, more of the nuts and uh, seeds and flavourings so that it's really punchy um, and you've got more crunch there. Whereas the sweet one, I, I would eat for breakfast, um, so I want more of those oats in there to get that kind of slow release energy in at the start of the day. Um, well done Colleen, I think the rainbow was a bit easy today wasn't it? Um, yeah, I was running out of places over here that I could hide it. Um, you are quick Colleen. Um, okay, so we'll start with the sweet base, so we're going to start with, um, we're going to make like a, a syrupy mix to bind the oats together. Um, and flavour them slightly. So we've got some vegetable oil, which um, most of the vegetable oil that's sold in the UK is rapeseed oil, um, but you could also use sunflower oil. You just want a liquid neutral oil, basically. Um, so we'll go in with that into our big bowl. So that's two tablespoons or 30 millilitres. And then the same again of maple syrup. If you don't have maple syrup or you find the flavour a bit strong, you could use something like agave. Um, you just want a liquid sweetener. Um, which is going to help kind of stick and bind together. And then we've got half a teaspoon of cinnamon and I've got a little pinch of fine salt in here um, as well. The fine salt is quite important for this recipe. Um, it sounds odd to put salt in, into a sweet granola but actually it just it accentuates all those flavours um, and gives you a nice more richness. So I use fine salt here because you want those um, grains to spread really well throughout the mix. If you're using, I usually use flaky sea salt to like garnish things or season things at the end or put that in sauces which will dissolve but here you want the, the crystals to go across the mix so we use fine salt here. And then I've got a heat teaspoon of orange zest. So I've pre-zested mine um, so that I'm nice and prepared. But I'll show you my little trick. So sometimes you might have a recipe that calls for just the juice of an orange or a lemon or a lime or calls for like less than the whole thing, so maybe it just needs half. Um, today I got about a tablespoon and a half of this orange, just like a medium sized orange, and I only wanted a teaspoon really because I don't want it to be too overpowering in the granola at the end. Um, so, zest the whole thing, 
And this goes for if you're just using um, the juices as well. So that's the whole thing, and then pop it into a little bag or into a little um, Tupperware container, plastic container. Um, seal that up and then pop it in your freezer. Um, and then anytime you get another recipe that needs zest, you don't necessarily need to go out and buy more citrus fruits. You can just pop those. You can just pop those out of the freezer, and you can add it straight to your baking or your cooking um, from frozen. It will literally defrost in your recipe very, very quickly because they're so tiny. Um, so that's a really nice little hack and a way to get absolutely everything out of your oranges and your lemons. Um, you can even do it with things like satsumas and tangerines. If you're going to eat them and peel the skin off. Um, and just eat the segments. Zest it first, put your zest in the freezer and then peel it as you would um, and, and eat it like that. Um, really handy, especially at the moment when we don't want to be running out when we just need one lemon for a recipe. You can also, if you've got some lemons that are going bad, you can also, or any citrus fruit, you can cut them up and you can squeeze the juice out and then pour that into an ice cube tray, freeze that um, and then you can use those for your lemon juice or your orange juice or lime juice in your recipes as well. Um, and then my final trick with your citrus fruits, if you want ice and a slice in a drink, um, you can do an all-in-one where you slice this up, um, or your lemon, grapefruit even, um, quarter it or half it, slice it up into slices, then lay those flat on a baking tray, pop those in the freezer, um, let them freeze and then once they're frozen pull them off the tray and pop them into a box or a bag um, and put them back in the freezer that means they won't stick together if you just throw them all in a bag um, you'll end up with like a big clump of orange slices which is not helpful um, unless you're making a big bowl of punch um, so yeah pick those off put them into the box and then they'll be frozen loose and you can just dip into the freezer pop your frozen lemon or lime slice into your drink of choice um, and then you've got a cold, you've got your ice and your slice in one. Um, so there's all my citrus fruit saving hacks for you. Um, I'll get back on with the granola now. So we've got our syrup, our oil, uh, cinnamon, salt and orange zest in here. And we're just going to mix that together until we've got a nice even liquid. Nice sound effects here. Karen, can you use avocado oil? Um, or grapeseed oil. Yeah, sure. As long as they're not like too powerfully flavoured. Um, you can use coconut oil. I'm going to use coconut oil for the savoury one. Um, it's, just, it's just obviously solid to start with and it helps mix together if it's liquid. Okay, so I've got that nice mix together now. It should be still quite loose. Um, and then I've got 150 grams of jumbo oats. So I, use, I like the big chunky oats. Um, so I just go straight in with those. And then just fold that through and it smells divine so that is another perk of making your own granola at home one you get to choose exactly what goes in it you can make endless flavor combinations um, you can use your favorite bed thing or you can use it as a way to use up little bits and bobs and have a everything but the kitchen sink granola um, but you can also you also get the gorgeous smell um, when you're making it here but then when it goes in the oven it gets even better your house smells amazing whoever you live with is going to absolutely love you um, and it's a lovely thing to do like at the weekend fill your house with that nice smell have a nice chilled potter around make it and then you've got breakfast um, to see you through the week really and depending on how many people you want to feed you can just scale up these recipes really easily, just times them by two or three um, if you've got a bigger family and you want to make a bigger batch. Okay, so you can see now, hopefully, um, we've got a nice even consistency where some of the oats are sticking together, everything's coated nicely in that syrup and oil mixture. Um, and what we're gonna do now is just spread it onto a baking tray. So my advice would be to use the biggest baking tray you have, which is going to make everything quicker for you. Um, if you try and pack it, pack too much onto one tray, it's going to take longer to bake. Um, and what we're looking to do is bake a golden colour into the granola, but you're also looking to bake out the moisture. So having a thinner, even layer really helps with that because it means that the water in the mix can come out um, and dry as well as bake. So, just take that off. So with both recipes, 
We're going to give the oats a bit of a pre-bake for 10 minutes. Um, we're using the oven at 160 Celsius today. That's 320 Fahrenheit or gas mark 3. I've written that down today. Um, so we want to keep the oven quite low because we want to give it time to dry the granola as well as baking it. And if you go too high with your oven, you're going to get burnt edges before the middle is done. So we'll shake this out and you want a nice even layer. And then we'll pop that in. And then halfway through for both of the recipes, we'll add in anything extra that we want to be toasted, so seeds, nuts, or coconut. Um, and then we'll bake it for another 10 to 15 minutes, just depending on how um, golden it's looking. Um, so we'll get this one in the oven, and then we'll start the savoury one. Um, and then we'll come back to this one in a minute. granola. So as I said this one is starting with a lot less oats and the ratio of nuts and other good stuff in there is much higher. So we're going to start with 40 grams of oats um, which I've got measured out here and then we've got some coconut oil um, so that's 15 grams of coconut oil. We're going to pop that in there and then for flavour I've got some cumin seeds and nigella seeds which I am going to add at the start um, bigger seeds I would add halfway through, but these ones which are there for flavour and will really benefit from that extra time in the oven to release their flavours, I'm going to add now. And also in here I've got another pinch of fine sea salt, which again is going to um, season our granola, um, which is actually more important in the savoury one because you want to have that bit of salt to make it um, really tasty and quite more rich actually. Okay, so we're just going to rub a um, slightly different method here. We're just going to rub together the oats into that coconut oil and I'll show you, try and show you in a minute. So just rubbing between your hands like that, getting everything involved. It probably helps to have a slightly bigger bowl to do this to be honest. So I invented this savoury granola. I don't think I'm the first person to invent a savoury granola. That sounds quite grand. Um, but this one I came up with because I wanted something a bit more special to top one of my favourite soups with. Um, but also, it's good to just have on hand as a snack and it's lovely on a salad as well. Um, and you can really play around with the nuts and the, the flavourings you put in there. I'm using um, quite chunky like coconut flakes, which toast up really nicely and go quite crispy in the oven. Um, and cashews, which are quite mild as well, um, but they're often in things like curries and stir fries, so I quite like them, that combination with the cumin seeds and the nigella seeds. Um, they just scents it really nicely. Okay, so, should have quite a sticky crumble mix. It's kind of like making pastry. The technique that we're using is like making pastry or making a crumble topping. So you're looking to kind of rub that fat into your grains, um, and it will stick some of them together and you want to coat it nicely. Okay, I'm just going to give my hands a rinse and then we will carry on. Oh, Sue, any alternative to Nigella seeds? Um, they're not essential, they're just there for flavour, so if you don't have them, you can just leave them out or add another seed that you like. You could try coriander seeds, fennel seeds, um, anything that's going to go with the kind of savoury cumin. So think of things that would go in a curry, fennel, uh, coriander, sesame seeds even. Um, sesame seeds would be really nice with the cashews and the coconut. Um, they would toast up really nice in the oven as well. Okay, so we've got our mix here. You can see it's quite, quite sticky. So we'll just clear these off the tray. Again, you want to get it into a nice even layer. Spread it out. Okay, 
So this one is also going to go into the oven for 10 minutes, um, 160 Celsius, 320 Fahrenheit or gas 3. Um, so we'll see how our other one is getting on. Okay, the other one needs about another five minutes. So whilst we wait, I will show you the end goal. So for the sweet one, this is what we're looking for. We want a lovely golden colour all over um, and we want it to be baked nice and evenly. So when we take it out in a minute, I'll show you how to make sure that um, you're getting an even bake. So as I said, your edges are gonna to start to brown a lot quicker because they're exposed to more of that heat than the middle section. So we need to rotate everything. So we'll turn it with a spatula. We'll flip it over so that the stuff that has been on the bottom gets to the top and the stuff that has been around the edges goes to the middle and swaps over. Um, and then we'll add our nuts and seeds in. So yeah, once you have baked your granola, you need to um, leave it on the tray to cool. That residual heat is going to help um, help make your granola really crispy and stay crispy. So leaving it on that tray versus if you just dumped it hot into a container or a bowl, you're going to get lots of condensation um, and that moisture is going to creep back into your granola so it's not going to stay crispy for very long at all. Whereas if we leave it to cool and almost dry again on that tray, um, it's going to be much more crispy and then once it's cool, you can either eat it, which I did this morning, or you can put it into an airtight container and keep it for a few days. Um, my mum actually keeps hers for ages. Mine never lasts that long because me and my boyfriend always eat it. Um, but I think, I think probably four or five days will be, will be fine. Um, just make sure you've got a, the lid doesn't really go on that. Um, just make sure you've got a nice seal on the container you're using. So one of these sorts of jars is really nice for that. I haven't got a clean one um, free at the moment, but you want a, a jar or a tub that's got a nice seal on it. So you can get some good um, plastic tubs as well that have a good seal on them. Um, okay. So I'm going to grab the sweet granola, we're going to add the bits back into that one and then we'll pop that back in the oven. Um, yeah, back in a sec. Okay, so you can see with this one, it's just lightly, um, lightly baked all over. I would leave it a little bit longer actually for the first round. But as you're here, I'm gonna crack on. Um, what we don't want to do though is burn our nuts and seeds um, because that's gonna make them bitter. Um, so you wanna bake it quite well first and then add your nuts and seeds. Um, so about 10 minutes first off and then another 10 to 15 afterwards. So the seeds that I and nuts that I've chosen to use here, I really like the combination with the orange zest and the cinnamon. Um, so I've got some sunflower seeds, which I think are a little bit underrated, if I'm honest, as a seed and by myself. Up until a couple of months ago, I never really bought them or used them. But when you toast them, they actually have a really, really lovely nutty flavour and they work really well in loads of different things. So I've been playing around with them and I've used them in a nut roast with some walnuts, which was really, really nice. I also found a recipe for sunflower seed meatballs, which sounds absolutely crazy. Um, and it was a bit crazy to look at and do, but it was delicious. Um, so you basically just like blended them with a load of different things and spices and then shaped them into meatballs. Um, so they're really versatile. Um, and they add a nice, they're quite a cheap way to add some crunch to your granola because in the UK, 100 grams is about 99p, so um, it's, a, it's a nice way to kind of not make your granola really expensive. If you're going to throw like macadamias and pecans and all sorts into it, you're going to make it really expensive. This is a nice way to make it a bit more economical. So we'll just sprinkle those across the whole thing. Want them nice and evenly distributed again. Um, and then I've got, um, so that's 30 grams of seeds, I've got 30 grams of skinned hazelnuts. So these are sold in the UK as blanched hazelnuts. Um, and I quite like them with their skins off because the skins can be quite bitter and they can also sort of flake off when you roast them and just end up with kind of like 
dusty skin at the bottom of your granola, which I don't personally love. If you can only get ones with the skins on, it's fine. Um, and so they, they come whole, but I've just sort of roughly chopped them so they're at least a half a hazelnut, but some pieces you can see are a little bit smaller. Um, but if I just put them in whole, I'm not going to get that good distribution across my granola. So cutting them in half, or if you've got bigger nuts, maybe quarter, like a pecan, you could smash them up a bit more, or walnuts, um, just so that they really mix through your granola quite nicely. And then we're going to go for our little turning. So if you start at the edges, you try use the biggest spatula you have and try and turn it so you're literally flipping it over like that. You want to get it all kind of mixed over and together and then we'll redistribute it so that those edges don't burn. I'm intrigued to know if any of you watching have made your own granola before at home. Have you? Would you try? Okay, so we'll just give it a shake again. And that one's going to go back in for another 10 minutes. Sorry, just checking questions, okay. Sound is good. I, maybe I'm talking a bit too quietly and standing too far away from the phone. Is this better? Hopefully you can all hear me. Um, okay, Colleen said, if I wanted to incorporate peanut butter for the sweet granola, would I do that at the beginning? Yeah, you can do that. Um, I would just heat it up slightly so it becomes a bit more runny um, and then mix that in with your oil and syrup mixture at the start. Um, you maybe want to reduce your oil a little bit because the peanut butter has some fat in it. Um, so you just want to get basically a consistency that's going to coat your oats really nicely. So the peanut butter will actually create more like clusters. You know, get some granola that is more like bigger chunks and you get these nice kind of like big pieces that you can pick out of the packet. That is the kind of like a heavier binding, so that will create that. But you will need to bake it slightly more if you're if you've got, you're getting bigger clumps like that, because this inside of those clumps will have more moisture. Um, so lower your oven temperature a little bit more, bake it for a bit longer, um, take one out and just leave it to cool, um, and then try it and see if it's crispy all the way through. If it's not, I would advise kind of keep going with a slower, longer bake. Um, you could also actually do that with the savoury one, that might be quite nice, you get peanut butter in like a satay sauce, so um, the other thing you could do is um, if you wanted to get that peanutty flavour, you could use the powdered peanut butter that you can get, you could add that into your mix at the start um, and mix that through your oats. I know sometimes you buy things like that and they end up in the back of the cupboard and you're like what do I do with this, um, which I've definitely done, I speak from experience. Um, so yeah, you can use that for that. Okay. Any more questions? Colleen says she made granola years ago. Well, hopefully this will inspire you to get back in and, and make some more. Lisa said she started making her own granola. That's great. Sue's helped out her daughter. Lovely. Oh, Elizabeth's made it once but burned it. Okay, so you want a low oven temperature. If you're nervous with the oven temperature, then just go lower, always go lower, um, and just let it bake for longer, and just keep checking it. You'll get to know maybe the first two or three times you bake it, you might need to keep checking on it fairly often just to see how it's going. Um, but fourth, fifth, sixth time, you know your oven, you know your mix quantity, you know how you've spread it on your baking sheet because everyone's going to have slightly different, um, slightly different oven, slightly different size sheets. Um, so it is something that you kind of, 
you can carry on with and you get to know it and then it feels very like second nature and you can just whip up a batch um, without really thinking about it. So maybe the first couple of times you do need to concentrate and watch what you're doing in the oven um, but then it becomes like a really nice like pottery activity that you can do when you're just like milling around on a Sunday morning and want something nice to eat. Okay, would tahini work in a savoury? Those of you that have watched my other lives may have heard me bang on about tahini. I'm obsessed with it. I don't know why I haven't thought of that. Thank you, Jenny, for giving me the idea. I'm going to try it and I, I would guess it will work, yeah. I think sometimes if you only use a little bit of tahini, you don't really get that flavour through. Um, I think because we're baking it, you would, you'd sort of roast it. So if you're starting with a light tahini, which is raw sesame seeds blended into a paste, you will then effectively roast that into like a more nutty flavour. Um, so yeah, I'm not actually sure on quantities because I haven't tried it, because I hadn't had such a brilliant idea, but thank you for giving me the idea. Um, I, I'm definitely going to try that and I think, it, I think it should work. I would just add it in with your coconut oil um, and mix that through. It's going to be sticky but delicious. Uh, Lisa says, how long will it keep? Um, so yeah, you can make a bigger batch. I think I would be confident to say it's gonna last four to five days. Um, my mum does keep hers for like, I'm sure she keeps it for like a month. She makes a massive batch like once a month um, and keeps that. I haven't tried that because we just can't have that much granola in our house. We, we can't, we wouldn't be able to control ourselves. Um, so my batch is a slightly smaller batch, um, but yes, I think it would keep fine. As long as you make sure that you have baked it until it's crispy, you've left it to dry on the tray for like a good hour before, and make sure it's actually properly cold before you put it into any container, because you don't want that condensation um, ruining your hard work. Okay, I'm gonna grab the savory granola out of the oven, and then we're gonna add the extras into, into there. Easily, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but again, you can multiply this up if you want to have just like a nice little savoury snack to make you, to see you through the week. You can multiply this up. Okay, so we'll just move that around a little bit, give it a shake. Then we're going to add some cashews. So I've got how much have I got? 30 grams of cashews again. Um, but again, it's much higher ratio, so it's almost equal with the weight of oats that we started with. So it is a more kind of nutty mix. Um, and don't you don't have to stick to my quantity. This is for my sweet granola. That's the kind of ratio that I like for my breakfast. If you want something that's way more nutty, um, my mum makes hers is about fifty percent nuts. So you can like throw at it what you like um, and play with the ratios um, to to suit how how you like it. Um, so the cashews, they don't have to be whole, they can be like broken pieces, I've got some smaller pieces in here, some whole ones, so sometimes in the UK you can buy bags of like broken cashews which are usually a bit cheaper, so they're really good for this because you can just throw them in, you don't need them to be whole. Um, okay, so add those in, and then I've got some uh, coconut flakes. So there's lots of different types of dried coconut you can get, one is desiccated coconut which is kind of grated quite small. These are flakes, um, which you can get in most supermarkets or you can buy um, online. And you get nicer, kind of bigger pieces. And if you eat them like that, you can see they're quite flexible. You can kind of bend them. They're a bit chewy, um, but if you toast them, and you can buy them toasted in some places, um, they become quite crisp and nice and golden. Um, and then they just add like a kind of different kind of crispy crunchy rather than the nuts, which are like properly crunchy. So I quite like them for that. And this is just 15 grams of these, but volume wise, you can see they're quite light. So actually the amount versus the weight, the weight seems like quite a small weight, but they're actually quite, it's quite a lot for the mix. So add those in and then again, just give it all a stir over. Give it a good mix. And then we'll pop that back in the oven. And then we'll talk fruit for the sweet granola. So 
So Angel has asked a question about the dried fruit. So I have seen some recipes where the dried fruit goes into the mix and goes into the oven. Personally, I find that that makes it quite dry and almost chewy and sometimes burn. Um, so I don't do that. I add mine when everything's completely cool at the end. So today I've got dates which um, these are chopped up into like little cubes, which is nice because they're going to distribute throughout our granola nicely. So again, that's 30 grams. Yeah, 30 grams. Um, so we'll just, once the granola is cool on the tray, we'll just scatter those across the top. Um, and you can use absolutely any dried fruit you like, like figs is really nice, um, raisins, dried apricots, dried cherries, dried cranberries. Whatever you, and you can use a combination as well. Um, a lot of granolas that you buy in the supermarkets will have like a mix of two or three fruits in there. Um, so play around with what you have or what you like. Um, but my advice would be to add those at the end because then they'll stay nice and juicy and you get that different contrast of texture when you're eating the granola. Um, so you get like a crunch of the nut, the crispy oats, and then like a chewy piece of fruit, um, which the fruit kind of rehydrates when you put the milk on it as well, so then it plumps up a bit. Um, so yeah, that's my that would be my advice um, on fruits. Um, what else is there to say? You could add fruit to the savoury one as well. If you wanted to do like a Moroccan one, you could add in some different spices and add some raisins into that. They quite often use things like apricots in a tagine or raisins in like a salad um, which can be quite nice to give you a bit of contrasting flavour. I think with granola you want to, there's a lot of like textural focus but you also want lots of different flavours going on and the fact that they're different separate like particulates is nice because then in each mouthful you kind of get a different burst of flavour depending on what's what you're crunching on at that point in time. Okay I'm just going to check questions. Angel also asked about dried apple, which yes, would work. Also, banana chips. I'm trying to think of other dried fruits on the spot now. Whatever you like. Paul says, yes, I know the happy pair. They had a visitor, Jim, who made some granola. <laughs> Their recipe is now called Cool Jim's Granola. And it's in shop, oh well. Cool Nikki's granola, Paul. I would love that. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Jenny, I like that. Jenny says uh, she always loves recipes that you can make your own, as or as she calls it, hurdy birdy. It love that. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah, you can make these completely into your own. Um, you can, I have also experimented with um, adding different grains. So if you've got something like quinoa flakes or another grain flake, um, sometimes you can get like rye flakes or barley flakes. Um, obviously if you need them to be gluten free, then use a gluten free one or pick gluten free grains. Um, but you can mix in the different oats and, and they can give you different flavors and slightly different textures as well. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get the sweet granola out now we're not going to wait on the live um, for it to cool down, don't worry. Um, but if you do have any quest final questions, then throw them out. We'll probably have another couple of minutes on here uh, before I go, so let me know. Um, or flavour combinations. Thank you for the tahini suggestion. I'm so excited to try that. I might even try it in a sweet one. Okay, so I'm just getting this out to show you. I am actually going to put it back into the oven for a couple of minutes because it's not quite as golden as this one yet, particularly in that middle area. So we can just give it another sort of rustle around, um, make sure everything's getting coated. And don't be afraid to like get this out as many times as you need to. Um, Obviously you are going to lower your oven temperature a little bit if you keep opening it, but for this it doesn't really matter because you actually want it to cook sort of more low and slow. Um, so we'll pop that back in for another five minutes. And then I'll just show you the coconut flakes. 
So you can see the coconut flakes go almost orange um, in the oven, that's really hot, that's silly. Um, but you just want to watch those, because coconut's got quite high fat content, it, they can burn much more quickly than nuts will do. So I'm going to just flip them around to make sure that these ones in the middle that are more pale are coming back to the edges. Um, and again with this one, we leave it on the tray to cool down um, and dry it out a little bit more. Those spices that we added in there smell really, really nice. I have to say, I've never baked these sweet and savoury ones together before. It's quite an odd combination coming out of the oven, the smell. Um, so I'd probably recommend try one or the other um, at a time, just for maximum nice smells. Okay. So just to recap, before we go, uh, just checking if there's any questions. No more questions, I don't think. Um, Colleen, yes, the savoury one was designed for the top of my tomato soup and I love it, it's so nice. Um, and the, the nuts stay quite crunchy, whereas if you put like croutons or something on top, they go soggy quite quickly. The nuts will stay nice and crunchy, so lovely. Um, and it does float if you've got a thick soup. Um, okay, so, quick recap of what we've done with the two granolas. So we start with the base, um, which is up here on both recipes. With this one, we want to mix the liquids um, and any spices, so vanilla, cinnamon, zests of citrus fruits, um, mix that together into a little paste. Then we add our oats and we mix that all through until the oats are all coated. With the savoury one, we added the hard coconut oil and the, the salt and the spices to the oats and rubbed that together until that was all coated. We bake the bases for 10 minutes and then we bring them out once they're slightly golden and we add any nuts, seeds or coconut that you're going to add to that. Toss it all around, make sure it's all kind of mixed up so that you're getting an even bake and then you want another 10 to 15 minutes in the oven um, until they're really gold. And then the magic trick is to leave it to cool on the tray for like at least an hour um, before you put it in, into any containers so that it dries out nicely. Okay, so that's me today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, I would love to see if any of you make granola. I'd love to see your pictures. Um, and if you want to follow me and see any more of my recipes, you can follow me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Nikki underscore cooks. Nikki is spelled N-I-C-K-I and I think Dave has just put a link to my Instagram page in the comments so have a look. Um, feel free to message me if you have any more questions um, about this recipe or any others. Um, and if not then hopefully we will see you again next Friday um, or any other day of the week when the others are doing lives. I'll be back next Friday. Um, okay, so thank you.